You're listening to A to Z, episode 87. Today's guest is Jalen Gasper, community organizer and host of E2 the Podcast. It's like they're trying to be too meta. We're going to make them an offer they can't refuse. Much better. Yeah. You can, you can, can I buy you a drink? You can't yeah, just but, well, well, I mean, he did pick out somebody we know. Well, you sidestepped the question. That technology no, does no. not exist. Hey everybody, what's up you guys? I'm Aaron, I'm here with my co-host Zach. Hi. Welcome to the A to Z podcast, where we sit down with some folks that make Southeast Texas a better place to live. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. Also make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram for updates, clips, and extra content, as well as our Facebook groups, A to Z podcast group, and A to Z movie night, the groupening, where you can talk with other listeners and mostly share funny memes. Yeah, man. Um, well, I mean, what do we have to say about this one? This is a really fun episode. Man, this is like A to Z in, in political talk. We talked about all kinds of all kinds of things. That is our disclaimer. This is kind of a political one. It's a little philosophical, too. But yeah. uh, just strap in. Get ready for it. And remember, you know, that's that's what we started this whole thing for, is to like, talk to people who have different opinions than mm-hmm. we do. Yeah. And we have had on conservatives. We've had on uh, more liberals. We've had on people that just don't care about either one. Yeah. So why don't you just... Sit back and listen and listen to somebody that might be different or similar to you yeah. and just have a good time. Yeah, and also be sure to check out E2 the podcast if you're uh, if you want to get the scoop on what Jalen's working on recently. Uh, he's doing all kinds of cool things in the community, uh, trying to work on a lot of different problems. And yeah, it's gonna it's it's pretty and cool. He's, the the thing I will say about him is he's pretty generous with his time. Oh yeah. So uh, you know what? He deserves you guys to listen. So that's it. Let's just jump into it. You will it. not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on the court from 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on the rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still lights of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper occasion. Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so damn relevant, and women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on search for tomorrow, because black people will be in the street looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harry R. Women Liberationist and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Key, nor sung by Glenn Campbell, Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert Humperdinck, or The Rare Earth. The revolution will not be televised. Everyone knows some of us are best. It's the greatest yeah, sound. Yeah, we were driving over here and I was like, we're going to talk about political stuff. You're going to do your Donald Trump voice, right? And he's like, could. I got it. Yes, you have to do it the whole episode. <laughs> no, Please no, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Please don't. I'll, I'll just kill myself. Uh, but what do you guys think about the recent mass shootings that happened? Well, how do you think we should like tackle them? I don't know. That's that's a, like a three hour conversation. That, that, yeah, that's a good way to start it. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I don't. I, I I've think, never been like I, I I get. I I think like increasing legislation, making it a little harder for for people to get firearms, isn't a bad idea. I'm. I don't think we can really take guns away. Realistically. But it's it's the I think I just I still think it's the mental health thing. It's just like yeah. Mindhunter. Everybody likes Mindhunter, right? Mm-hmm. And Mindhunter is telling the story of the FBI agent that established a protocol for how we find and track and profile 
uh, serial, serial killers, killers, you know? Yeah. So yeah. why couldn't we do the same for mass shooters? If we see the commonalities and we see a lot of them share the same path, a lot of these, these in the past decade, well, I mean, it's really been the big uptick. A lot of them share uh, that they posted on 4chan or 8chan right before yeah. they did something, you know, like, why can't we, I'm not saying like ban the use of those sites, but it's just like, maybe we should be sitting on that, that site looking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, my, and my only fear about like certain red flag laws that could like imp be implemented is that, you know, during the past when we tried to uh, do red flag legislation for, you know, other ideologies, say for instance, um, even when we're talking about con counterterrorism, uh, when we're talking about uh, Muslim jihadists, it's like a, a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of the leftists could consider that to be a, a patriot act a bit overboard. Yeah. Um, same thing, even if we go back in the past with the Black Panther Party. So it's just like, you know, how J. Edgar Hoover really cracked down on that ideology, mm -hmm. um, branded them as communists, and uh, just really uh, made the public perception of the Black Panthers a bad a uh, bad perception. And so the only thing about red flag laws, I just don't want it to... <sighs> Is that what that would be called? Red flag laws? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Like, some you, kind of legislation. Yeah, legislation. Well, the, red, the red flag laws is like, is like, hey, it it means that you have the ability to kind of like snitch on your neighbor. If your neighbor's acting out of character and stuff like that and you know yeah. they have guns, you could you could literally call the police mm -hmm. and be yeah. like, and that's hey, why I, this guy's been yeah. coming home drunk every night and I think he's like beating his wife and he has guns, so could you come and do this like safety check? But it's just going to end up having a lot of people front door kicked in and shot. So I don't, I don't like red flag laws at all. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's because it can be exploited. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Because like, think about it. Like when they're looking at these red flag laws and looking out for red flags, you think they're going to go for the guy who loves the police officer? <laughs> Are they going to go for the uh, Antifa guy? <laughs> yeah. Who who has like like detailed manifestos on his yeah. page about like oh no F twelve like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just like I. I want to like really be weary, but it's like I, I do feel like we've gotten to a position to where like we have to do something about it. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have to do something yeah. about it. So it's we just like try something. <laughs> well, try yeah. something. I I don't. This is the one thing that's really strange that I think would be highly effective in, and I don't think it would like stop all shootings or whatever. But so one of the common one of the commonalities between most mass shooters is extreme isolation. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are all people that live in extreme isolation, and they feel isolation, alienation. they feel mm -hmm. yeah they feel alienated from the rest of society. And most of it is like a deep like loneliness, and most of it is like kind of that incel stuff, right? So what nobody's talking about is, is we God need dang get it, boys laid. We need <laughs> to, we need to make prostitution legal. Yeah. First of all, prostitution needs to be legal <laughs> just you. because, oh yeah. just because, like it needs to be legal just because. Did we talk? We were like, talking about this the other night. Like right? screw telling yeah. grown people what they can and can't do. That's that's it. So yeah. if you want to, if hey, if you're trying to sell some shit, sell some shit, and then these extremely isolated people, man, they could get on there and they'd be like, man, I'm, I'm gonna look up, see how, I, you know, get get my body touched, yeah. and then. Yeah. And then maybe they'll chill out a little bit. I re I strongly believe that. I yes. strongly believe that. I feel like we should because I, I think it's multifaceted. That's why oh, I was yeah, saying it's a, a three-hour conversation, and it's not. And that's the problem is when everybody talks about it, they want to like narrow it down to one thing, right? So people mm -hmm. on the left are like, "We got to get rid of all the guns," and it's like, "Well, I mean, maybe, but people are still going to drive luck. trucks through crowds." <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then some and people well, are like, "You have Great Britain; they have yeah. like knife knife violence, and is they have acid yeah. violence, which." Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather get shot than get splashed I, with acid. I don't, yeah, I don't want my face melted having acid. <laughs> but so it's like it's all these things. But I do think if you were just gonna like point out one thing that might be the best is legalized prostitution. Yeah, yeah, fifty Definitely. percent reduction. Get these boys I mean, laid. Fifty. Maybe. Get them boys you, laid. Like please. Maybe. Like, yeah, please. It's always men too. I yeah. mean, shoot, it's not women doing it. It's always men. So. So, these 20, uh, so there's 20 a commonality. Young dudes there's that, a commonality to it. It's it's extremely lonely people, and everyone that does it has a penis. So maybe how we can solve this is get these lonely people's penis peepees touched, <laughs> and then maybe <laughs> that's going to be the start, most definitely. And that's, I mean, I that's mean, the start. Man. It, start. It, it, yeah. it, it, it absolutely is. But uh, <laughs> going to a more serious <laughs> note about like you know just going back to the ban on all gun yeah. things. Like uh, I always say, like uh, even like um, I had the chance to the, uh, debate on the news uh, a couple weeks back. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, and um, I even told them like comprehensively when we're thinking about crime, even on a neighborhood level, like you know banning guns is not going to be the end all be all. It's mm -hmm. not, and it's like you know the thing about it is, is just like when we're thinking about comprehensive 
uh, legislation, we have to think about the whole picture. Mm. You know, and in, in neighborhood crime, it's like you said, it's multifaceted. Like not, like not only we have you know the white nationalists <laughs> who want to go up and you know kill everybody in Walmart, but we also have you know gang violence. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I feel like uh, things like that could be. Uh, will need to be re- revi- revitalized through social norms and you know not really as much as a political issue yeah. as it is a community as community cultural. yeah, yeah. culture yeah. and community issue and so uh some of the things that i feel like we should really focus on is uh our, our uh, impoverished communities, making sure that you know people aren't homeless mm-hmm. um me and uh some people uh We've been working, uh, we have this political pack, uh, well, not political pack, but it's like a community pack, uh, put out their voting coalition. Yeah. And it basically compromises of all these nonprofits, including churches, uh, clubs, organizations that are in Port Arthur. And so what we want to do is come together and um, not only get people, uh, get rid of the voter apathy and get people more uh, excited about the process, but, you know, once we get the people voted in that we want voted in, we, wanted to, we have a plan to get rid of the homelessness. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, uh, I feel like that's one of the main things that we really need to tackle on. I don't feel like uh, uh, crime bills is something that we, we, we need to do to try to fix this either. I don't feel like drafting draconian legislation is going to be, you know, the uh, really the best option for yeah, this. Yeah, like putting more words in, in this book. Like putting more words in a book of yeah. rules, like well, there's, yeah. already, there's, already, and, and, there's already too many laws. I'll yeah. tell you that much right now. There's it, already too many laws. And for me, it's just like I, I don't feel like the state the state needs to continue to control us. Like I like not you know I don't want to sound like an anarchist, but I think you're I think you're more uh, a libertarian Democrat than a uh, than a social. Democrat. But the thing is, I don't like the Libertarian Party. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe in uh, autonomy and mm. I do believe in individualism, but I'm not. I, I do not believe in quasi libertarian BS. <laughs> at times but i mean yeah going back to this I, I just feel like when we're talking about these laws i don't feel like we should draft uh authoritarian crime bills to uh, to uh combat these laws because we've seen in the past definitely with you know my social identity when we're talking about the 1994 crime bill that it just ended up you know disproportionately affecting us in the wrong way what was way. the crime bill in 94 was uh, that a uh, texas thing or no that uh that the federal uh legislation that was uh unfortunately sponsored and written by joe biden <laughs> and uh <laughs> and signed by president bill clinton now, oh, now yeah. this legislation though was like bipartisan so it was across was the that board. like a response to like the like the rodney king the, all the riots yeah like all yeah. the crime and just yeah. all the street crime and everything and so like i guess joe biden wanted to uh he even st- stood up in the uh, chambers and said that uh, we need to no the Democratic Party needs to start being a party that's more stricter on crime or whatever. Uh. And so the only outlier in person who stood up and defended him was Bernie Sanders, <laughs> <laughs> and he he <laughs> attacked Biden and said, "No, this law is just going to disproportionately disproportionately affect you know uh, minorities yeah. in the wrong way and have negative it's effects." It's a punitive measure. It's not. Yeah. It's and not, that's uh, why I say. Uh, we, when we're looking at these laws and when we're looking how to better our society, let's start focusing on the actual leaks of our society and let's stop trying to act like, you know, be authoritarian about everything. Like, okay, well, if this a, a if there's a lot of crime in this neighborhood, let's just get the cops. And yeah. let, like, give the cops some more control. Uh, let them kick homeless people off the streets. Yeah. Because uh, that's what happens in places like Houston mm-hmm. all the time. So it's just like, you know, we see that that's ineffective. Now we need to start focusing on legislation that's going to make sure people aren't impoverished anymore. Yeah, and well, that's, so that's, that's where all the socialism is, yeah. starts kicking. Talking in. about impoverishment, <laughs> that's all crime is. Crime is just a side effect of economics. Yeah, most that's definitely. literally it. That's that's all there is to it. Uh, I mean, even pointing to a very specific case, uh, fifteen years ago, the worst city, the city with the highest crime rate in Europe, was Glasgow, Scotland. Right. Okay. Um, it's cloudy all the time, you know, suppressing. It also happened to be... Like Seattle. Yeah, kind of like Seattle, <laughs> but it, Seattle also, it also happened to be, uh, you know, have a lot of bad neighborhoods in it economically and stuff like that. And one, uh, one like, police sergeant decided he was... Because before that, the way they would do it is when crime would peak, they would just, like, round up a paddy wagon, go, you know, knock some heads together, do, like, a warrant roundup, stuff like that. And yeah. they were like, ah, this doesn't really do anything. So the, so the sergeant... Uh, made like a, a a special unit that was called like a, a neighborhood, uh, like a neighborhood helping unit. And so instead of them actually going out and like writing tickets and doing things like that, they were just like helping people. 
Yeah. Uh, they were throwing like wow. they were like throwing barbecues and stuff. It's the Mister Rogers plan. It's, yeah, it's kind of Mister <laughs> Rogers plan. But they would just like go out and help people, you know. Well, so, isn't it like kind of like the broken windows policy? It's like the, it's exactly like the broken windows policy. And if they like pull people over instead of giving them a ticket, they'd be like, "What's up, dude? Like, what's going on with you?" And they'd be like, "Well, you know, I can't, I can't afford my registration this time." So they'd be like, "All right, cool." And they'd just like, "All right, let's go get this registration taken care of now." And they saw a dramatic and drastic increase mm. or like decrease in crime, like like tenfold. And that's all it is. I mean, that's why there's a higher crime rate in the South compared to the Northeast because, the North, you know, you know, the Eastern Seaboard is the richest place. You know, I mean, it's just yeah, no matter states, what you do, definitely. it's 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 very correlative. Like it's crime is just bad economics. And so it, it makes no sense to make such grueling, punishing laws for crime because it's, it's not going to do anything. It's, I mean, it's going to lock people up, and it's going to cause us uh, much more debt because we're going to have to build more prisons, and we're going to have to do all that stuff. But if you look at, like, why these people are committing crimes, it's because they're fucking poor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's what yeah, it is. It's true. And you don't go out and commit crimes when you're rich. <laughs> you don't go out and commit crimes when, you know, you're, you're you know, you're semi-wealthy. Yeah, yeah, because you don't have the need to. Yeah. And, and, and even when not even talking about those people. Well, okay, if you're rich, you do go steal. No, you commit, yeah, yeah, yeah. You commit you, white-collar you, crimes. You, yeah. Yeah. It's like, and it then does you, happen. And then you, you get away with it. Yeah, that's a yeah. different thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different thing. <laughs> and then you just get away with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> y'all guys. Uh, but but it's true though. Uh, Just go to a federal resort, you yeah, know. Yeah, why not? No. But Sorry I mean, that, that shows in Glasgow that I mean, use uh, doing collective policies right. works. You know, uh, collect. Uh, being a collectivist and thinking about your fellow man works instead yeah. of just, you know, always being quick to punish your fellow man. Yeah. And I feel like that's when we when we talk about uh, individualism. It kind of gets like, like, kind of like muddied a lot of times mm. because Republicans use individualism, individualism, to say, right? Like, yeah, it's like, you know, like to say the exact opposite of what you, what yeah. you just right. said. Like, hey, well, you know, since we're individuals, like, it's kind of your fault if you commit a crime. Well, yeah, they they lean they <laughs> lean on that 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 whole thing of like, yes, everybody is responsible for their own actions and everything like that, but they yeah. lean hard on that, and that that's why there's yeah. more authoritative measures from them is because it's like it's it's responsibility, and then it's like. Uh, you know, it's like what they say about the people, the, Im the immigration thing is like, well, yeah. they, they made that choice. I made that. They made well, that see, choice to come over here. Look, that's like, the they thing. don't, they don't understand push and pull factors. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Not, they didn't go to school. But that's the thing, though, is that's the thing with individualism in, in the first place is it, it's a two way street. It's not just mm -hmm. a one way street. If somebody goes and commit a crime, it is true. That is their fault. Yeah. I am I'm a firm like mm. individualist. Like that is their fault. Right. Now you can't throw the book at them if you want to. That's 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 gonna be on you. But is their fault? Like people that come to the border, they're committing the crime. That's their fault. I mean, yeah, I know well, they're running they're, from they're a shitty situation. Like crimes, a lot of I them. know, I know they're running from a sh shitty situation, but that's their fault. But it's up to you if you have compassion or not. And that's you on you as an individual. It's a two way street. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they're they're doing something that's on them. But what are you gonna do? Are you gonna be compassionate or are you gonna be cold? Like. And then that's Every, when we think yeah. practically of what will work, what right. will actually work. Would it uh, be would, would, uh, being cold and uh, uh, egotistical work? Yeah. No, it, it doesn't. We, we've drafted laws like that before. But like you said in Glasgow, actually yeah. caring about people and being compassionate mm -hmm. seems to work more often than, you know, taking this egotistical approach. Like, oh, no, let's, you know, arrest asylum seekers and or let's just make sure nobody comes. Like, this is, yeah. this is not, you know, a, building a wall is not going to work, yeah. you know. Uh, well, I mean, there was already one there. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's another thing. It's like, you know, the wall that is there, D Donald Trump's taking credit for it now. Yeah, it's I'd... just like, no, it's been there, bro. So. They just go polish it up and say, it's, say you built it, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, well, just just to bring bring that conversation to, like, on a more local level, like, how have, I mean, y'all are trying to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what have you what have you seen come about? Is there, are there measures in place to try to do that kind of broken windows thing here in Port Arthur? Because well, you're more based in Port Arthur than, than Beaumont. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. But, but I mean, so you, you probably have, you probably know more about what's going on there than, than we do for sure. Yeah. We're more yeah. Beaumont based. So it's like, is there something in place that's, or something that's coming about from 
from what y'all are doing? Well, yeah. Well, what we're doing is just a, a more uh, community uh, inclusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, we we it's it's a lot of Latin headspace right now, Latin yeah. thesis right now. We haven't really you know applied anything in that manner. But uh, when what we're gathering we, the forces, yeah, yeah, gathering the forces. That's what it's all about, uniting the forces. Shout out to our new mayor, uh, Mayor Barty. Uh, yeah. That was his campaign slogan. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uniting <laughs> the forces. Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, but for us, it's like uh, what. Uh, well, let me just say what I do. Um, I'm, I'm a progressive organizer. Um, I started progressive organizing around like the Beto campaign. That was my really first time being on a campaign. You're like, you're like 20, 21? Uh, 22. 22. Just turned 22 this yeah. year. And so uh, <laughs> after uh, that, I really um, started being more inclusive with the community. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> no, the no, sneeze messed me up. It's not, I don't know, I mean, it's something in the air. It's, the air is polluted, you guys. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Southeast Texas, get out. Uh, support the Green New Deal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, but um, with me, uh, one of the main things that I try to work on when it comes to put out there is just getting everybody, you know, actually, you know, excited about the process again. Mm. Uh, during, throughout the Beto campaign, you've seen a lot of people starting to get excited again, yeah. even throughout this new mayor uh, uh, election. Um, a lot of Barty, our new mayor, uh, even though I didn't vote for him, but he he <laughs> did. But what I do appreciate is that he did have a pretty decent field program that did attract a lot of people to the political process. And so, you know, that was that's one of my main things uh, that I really want to do right now and, and have been doing. Just re-energize. Re-energizing yeah. people, getting people excited man because it's just like what was voter turnout this last election sucky yeah. uh yeah. i mean they're all here yeah, yeah I mean, we, it was like 10 percent here 15 yeah, percent like that yeah. uh lower yeah. uh we we have on average uh we have well first we have thirty thousand registered voters and put out there and on average probably we'll have an election of three thousand people who vote 10 percent yeah so yeah it, it, it's sad but i mean it's just about constantly moving that needle because uh, with local elections, it's going to be harder. But we did see the voter propensity inch up a little bit mm-hmm. during the Beto campaign, during the midterm elections. So yeah, that's yeah. good. Beto was kind of like a repeat. He was kind of like a like a sequel to the Bernie campaign in a way. Yeah, and it's, I don't I don't know what what he is now, but uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it kind of went like this, and then he should have just stayed in Texas. I think. Yeah, I don't but know. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah he should have. Well, he just he was right. It was a it's just a move. wave. Yeah, he got a lot of national news coverage and stuff when he was running for senator. So he was just like, you know, I'm gonna leverage this. Hey, he lost Ted Cruz by two hundred thousand votes, yeah. and that's close. So, yeah, like like when you consider in past Senate races, extremely close. Oh, that's real close. So that kind of that kinda, that was kind of your first experience with, or like the I guess the is that what I guess radicalized you got you going? <laughs> Don't well, say radicalized. <laughs> yeah, I said it as a joke. I said it as yeah, a joke. no, I know what you mean. <laughs> Uh, but I mean that that that's what really gave me the energy. But uh, prior to that, I, I did work with the NAACP. I was the youth advisor, and so like um, you know, I kind of seen like you know just from a community level what it took to get people excited about the process, and then I kind of just could combine that with uh, you know what I learned on the Bethel campaign, uh, my canvas experience there, and this then really just combined to combine the two, and uh, you you know really tried to make something out of that. So. Um, yeah, uh, in other words, yeah, the Beto campaign really did radicalize me because I, I feel like ever since then, I've been on go. I've yeah. been on go, like whether it's my, the podcast or whether it's just mm. community organizing, uh, campaign organizing, I've just been on go. Yeah, I see you in uh, Jeffco politics too. I mean, that's where, you know, aren't you in that Facebook group? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, <laughs> so that's, how, that's how I knew, you know, stuff like that, you know. We just get on there and argue all the time. I just, I, 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 I just, gave up on yeah, this. Yeah, I just, I just... I just sit back yeah, and watch. I, I just I, what what I, I what I love is hearing people like talk about politics. I love yeah, that. I yeah. love that. And in, in in anybody, no matter how much you know uh, knowledge you know about a politics or a certain uh, area of politics, I will always invite a conversation with you. But the only thing I do not like is barbershop politics. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I do not like this this idea of where we just sit around and talk about the revolution all day. <laughs> like, I, I, I do not like that. Like, yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, I understand, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed, but, like, let's start planning. Let's start actually yeah. Yeah. doing something. Yeah. We're, we're step one. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, you have a lot of guys in those group 
chat to like you you know have solid points and you know have not so solid points but you know they're so passionate but they're passionate behind a phone screen yeah right, and, and and very few of them are willing to change their viewpoints it seems uh, like. yes you have a lot of tribalists a lot of seems to be all it is really yeah. You know, I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I hate it, man. Like, man, one of my friends the other day just talked about like why he's anti Bernie, and I'm like, why? Uh, because uh, he's not a minority. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, ooh, ooh, <laughs> what? I don't like that one. I hate I, like, and it's just like this is what plagues us. Ooh, man. that's racist. Mm. Like, it's like okay, so Republicans when they say. You know, we focus too much on identity politics, yeah. right? You know, you know. First of all, I, I I hate when they say that because they focus on their own version of identity politics. Yeah. Identity yeah. politics is bad either way. Yeah. Either way, yeah. and either so way. when we think about that, like what, like let's stop thinking about this tribalist mindset. Yeah. And mm. another way, like it's not only you know how uh, it's not even like only based on identity, but it's also based on party lines. Mm. You have a lot of leftists uh, who will vote. Um, third party, say for instance, if Joe Biden gets the nom, and then you'll have people be like, yeah. oh, "Oh wait, wait, what you doing, man? We, we mm. close, we're kin." Like, no, we're not kin. Like, <laughs> I'm a leftist, so yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I want to vote for Jill Stein, I'm gonna vote for Jill Stein. Right? You know, I no, I didn't vote for Jill Stein. But, uh, <laughs> 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 I know people who did, and then I laughed at them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, hey, if we're talking about president, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I've I've voted third party since 2012. Well, I have. Can I ask what party? Yeah, uh, just Libertarian Party, oh. the next popular one. And it's not really because I'm a. It's not because I'm a Libertarian. It's, it's I mean, per se, it's only because uh, it's compared to the other. Because choices. I noticed in 2012, whenever Ron Paul moved, it was like the first time ever that uh, third party voted at voted at 15 percent. Oh, really? Yeah, and then I I I was like, all right, cool. Let's just keep that going. So I just feel like, especially in especially in a like a a, a race. Where my individual co vote does not matter whatsoever. Like, it does not matter whatsoever because it's electoral college. I'm like, I'm going to give it to this because at least it's contributing to the the idea that a third party could exist. It's possible. And I find a third party existing to be about the most important thing there is in the world. I don't care what party it is. It could yeah. it could be the, the gloopity glop party. I don't care. You know what's funny? The closer, like, the, closer yeah. the third parties get to being major players yeah. the more you hear talk on, on news media and everything about well you know a lot of people say that we've we've been such a successful government because we are a two party system you know yeah, two no, party it's, system to it's <laughs> not nah, two parties like having just two parties is no, like de facto tribal no because they're working it's together the worst and they're, thing in the entire and they're, world and they're looking like yeah. they're fighting each other but, it's, it's you know, Pepsi Coca-Cola they're fleecing the American yeah. people I mean that's just my view no no I, I hate the two party <laughs> system bro like, I, yeah. I absolutely hate it Um, and like I, I, I appreciate yeah. you know people like you who who, who choose to try to dismantle it because I right. feel like one like in in in, in years to come it, it will be dismantled uh at the further left we lean, lean if uh, either either by by choice or or because we fall apart yeah, yeah exactly um so I feel the exact same way yeah. um so yeah I totally hate the two party system um it kind of uh even when when you look at it in uh de in detailed forms like when you think about the the primaries mm -hmm. how the primaries are chosen uh, no you know, yeah it's it's gross where where can libertarians have their debate with, and they're different yeah. per state too yeah it, exactly right. so it's like okay so even though you know for third party even though I make it on this ballot for this state I probably won't make it on a ballot right. for like any Texas, other state like Texas you have to register with a party to vote in the in the in the primary. In the primary. primary. Yeah. yeah. And, and then as soon as you, yeah, and, and you can't vote in another primary. Like, mm -hmm. you can't vote. That's why another thing, I, I, I believe in ranked choice voting, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to ask. Yeah. That was, that's a really cool system. That is cool. Yeah. I, I watched a crazy YouTube video you, can, to explain you, are you, it. Are you able to give a, a concise explanation for it for our oh, listeners? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, I, I, still, I, I still mess up on the delivery. <laughs> I got I to gotta remember. It's not that complicated. In the footnotes, I'm going to have to find this this video I watched on it. And yeah, because it explains it really good, but it explains it like with zoo animals, like really well. <laughs> oh, I really, I definitely need to see that video. Yeah, it's like I, Animal I, Farm again. Really? <laughs> no, it's just like it's just like you know, you vote for tiger or giraffe, and it, it's I don't know, I mean, it explained it really well to me like a child. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> well, well, rank, rank choice of uh, voting is basically taking this idea of where like okay, like you know, strip parties, strip all that. Like yeah. like let, let's look at it like this. It let's look at it like a a, a tournament of who is your favorite rapper. Mm. All right, who is your favorite basketball player? Um, let's say, for instance, let's use the Democratic primary as an example, just as an example. Uh, some of these people I will never vote for, but just <laughs> as an example. Um, we have 
uh, let's say we have Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Pete Buttigieg. Yeah. I say, okay, well, you know, in this system, I have to vote for one person. Mm-hmm. So if I'm a fan of Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden, I have to choose between them. Mm-hmm. Right. But in a ranked choice system, we're saying, okay, like, no, that's not how, this is how we're going to decide this. We're going to say, okay, you rank the uh, your choice by uh, first, second, last, uh, from best to lot worst. Mm. Like, you'll, you'll say, for instance, if you want uh, Bernie Sanders, you'll say Bernie Sanders first, Pete Buttigieg second, Joe Biden third. And then they're all they're they're all getting. And then that, you can even leave off the yeah, ones that you don't want. At yeah, all. yeah, you can yeah. leave them off if you want to. But uh, even if you would want to rank every single one of them, you rank every single one of them, and then that's how people. That's how we're gonna get our votes for the people. We're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna try to say, okay, who got the most number ones? Who got the uh, most number twos? Most number threes? I know. I know. I even know some theories that say that uh, number two uh, gets the vice president slot. And, num- and number one gets the president's side. That's so, really not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I it mean, would take the vice presidential role out of like a more, I mean, I guess it's changed since Cheney, but it's more of like a like a prime minister kind of role or something. Yeah, like, like a that. PM. Yeah. yeah, because it's like uh, only thing, what if like they're two completely different ideologies? It's like deputy president, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. 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 And so I, I feel like me, honestly, I feel like that system will work better. And I feel like at the end of the day, that system is more populist. That system is actually saying, OK, well, the people are actually choosing like at this point, because even when we think about Democratic and Republican primaries, about by, by time we get to like the caucuses, the, pro, the parties already basically uh, eliminated and uh, basically over half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they basically you know cut out who who they don't want to be a part of the party already. Mm-hmm. Like you know when the Iowa caucus starts, there's gonna be like probably five people running. You know, there's twenty right now, and you know how they do that? They they have these BS uh, prerequis- prerequisites to be part of. Yeah, you like know? Uh, Yang trying to get into the debates. Like, it, it, yeah, you have to raise a certain amount of money. Exactly. To just, be able well, to be on the debate stage. To be on the debate stage, you have to be polling at least 1%. So I, think it's, do, I think it's 3%. Two, it's, 3%. It, it, keeps, it, it starts at 1%, one, one, and then it, it keeps going. going up. Yeah. So it's, it, and, and, and but, that equ- it but, but check this out. Money, yeah. Yang's been in an election for how long? Uh, what? Just like a year? Yeah. yeah. For, for a year, though. Yeah. Tom Steyer is just entering the election. You know, you guys know who that is. Mm-mm. It sounds familiar. He's sure a don't. Mayor, he used to be a mayor or something. Well, he's a billionaire, yeah. and and uh, he. Oh, was that's the, what we need. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah, oh, yeah, great, right? Man, that's, I want somebody who's gonna run the country like a business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> man, that's the best thing. Kleptocracies. Uh, but uh, Tom, Tom Steyer is. Um, he actually had a campaign. Uh. To impeach Donald Trump, uh, like last year, you That's probably see yeah. him on Facebook a lot. Yeah. Let's impeach Donald Trump. So this year, so, probably like two yeah. months back, he decides to run for president, and so conven- conveniently, he's already have enough donors. All right, to make the debate. Stage. Are we having two billionaires face off using using the extreme ends of the two parties of our two party system? To see if they can best each other in a battle for presidency. Is that what's ha- that's what's happening? Right? That, that's exactly. What's do you happening. see him? Do you see him actually getting up there? Put him in the ring. The well, the thing is, uh, yeah, put him in the ring. Put him in the ring. <laughs> I feel like again. I feel like uh, he would definitely because of his money. I, I would not be surprised if he's one of the people who make it to the Iowa caucuses. But I, I feel like when 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 we're talking about presidential noms, I feel like people are going to be very surprised how Bernie and Warren perform. Yeah, I feel like when when they when we start getting ladder into the election, a I lot of moderates are going to start dropping out because they're going to start seeing that the power, the people power. I don't think Elizabeth Warren's going to do good at all. Yeah, I, me, I didn't think that I'm either. Not a fan. I, I'm not a fan. Well, I, it's like. It, I would vote for, but yeah. like I'm Bernie all the way. <laughs> I just, I just Tulsa. think that whole Native American fiasco has just ruined her. No, you know she just apologized gross. for that, man. Let her go for it, man. Let her go. Let her go. <laughs> I'm just saying. We were just talking about identity, I'm man. Just Let saying. her go. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about me. I'm, yeah, I'm talking about Democrats. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if people are gonna forget about that. Yeah, and then when and, and then one of the things I kind of like. I'm afraid about with Elizabeth Warren. I hate the term electability, and I hate when people talk yeah. about mm-hmm. who could beat Trump. But with Elizabeth Warren, that's the only person I legit worry about when it's time to go against oh, Trump. Because yeah. yeah. he's like, one thing is she's so pre- pre- like 
professor like. Yeah. And she yeah. doesn't have like this appeal that people nah. have. Like again, she can't she can't go after him. I t- I'll tell she, you right she now. She looks like a Karen. I honestly okay, let's just say, <laughs> let's just yeah. say she looks like a Karen. She looks like Karen. Karen. <laughs> she looks like Karen. I'll tell you though, there's only one person I actually think that could maybe possibly be Don and I think it's a long shot. But I think Tulsi's the only one that could do it. Man. I really do. The spunk. She no, I just spunk. think it's I think it's the kryptonite because it's like you get like a badass like war vet up mm-hmm. there, right? Who's young and and pretty and stuff like that. Because Donald Trump can't he can't he can't go against that because she's also like she'll tell you straight up she'll be like, man, motherfucker, I slept in a hole in Afghanistan. <laughs> what have you done? Like that's that's his kryptonite. You got bone spurs, like, dude. That's yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Like that's his kryptonite. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren would go up there and stumble. And 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 he would just be like Pocahontas, and he would just and, and that's the thing he would exploit everything. Yeah. Like you know, Bernie would go up there and be like, "Listen, we're gonna have free, free college for everyone." <laughs> and then and then he would just be you know he would just tear them apart. Like he would tell he would tear everybody apart except for Tulsi. That's uh, it. That's well, look, <laughs> we, we we've hit our we've hit our point for like the midpoint break. That's so it. like like we'll take a break, we'll regroup, and maybe we'll we'll try to focus in on Something. Southeast Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Southeast Texas. All right. Hey, this is Julia with Wake Up Beaumont Podcast. You are listening to the A to Z Podcast. A to Z Podcast Studios are funded in part by patrons on Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, visit patreon.com slash A to Z B M T. All right, guys. Well, you know what that sound means. It's the middle of the episode. It is our break. It is our time to shill out for those who pay us a little bit of scratch. You know what I'm talking about? All right. And on Saturday, October 25th at the Jefferson Theater, that's right, the historic Jefferson Theater, yes. we have the Rocky Horror Picture Show with Mayu and Broussard. This is kind of a once a, a year cool. thing. They always bust this out right before Halloween. It, it's kind of a, a, a big deal. Yeah, but it's a cool, it's like a cool, that's a cool show. I love Mayu and Broussard opening for like the crazy Rocky Horror Picture Show thing where everybody's so going to be dressed up. And- yeah. That's going to be a good night. That is. Uh, doors open at 6, band starts at 7, and the movie starts at 7.30-ish. I think. Something uh, like that. After the you band. You know what? Just show up for the band show and, and the stick band. around for the movie. And bring your costumes, do all that stuff. You know it's going to be a good time, and it's only like $5. You get some craft beer. You get to hang out in the beautiful Jefferson Theater and build up downtown. That's bring right. downtown back. And if you want some more information on the events that are going on downtown, uh, head on over to discoverbeaumont.com. And let's get back to the episode with Jalen Gasper. You know, even though we're like, we, me and him and you, we we have similar ideologies. We see things the same way, but we're probably a little different. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that we can't all work. Together. No, it doesn't. Mean. I feel like that. Really, that means we hey, should we're all work Americans, together, brother. Yeah. We're all I, Americans, brother. I feel like our right differences right. should make us work together. You For know, sure. I feel like you know, if, if, if I don't want to live in an echo chamber. No, like, I want people to tell me why they disagree. Yes, you know, and not please. just be like. You're a piece of shit because you don't see it the same way. That doesn't make any sense. It, it makes no sense. I, that's how I, I actually I actually learn the most from getting bodied in debates. So <laughs> <laughs> so people who are getting bodied in debates, I'm like, oh okay, well I see that that yeah. wasn't really a good view. I had. Yeah, I was wrong for that. <laughs> was, you, you were kind of right yeah. about that. Uh, but yeah, and, and so that's why I kind of like uh, you probably hear Ben Sharpeo say this term a lot, but market of ideas. With Shapiro? Yeah. 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 Yeah, the market of ideas, probably. Yeah, uh, I've heard him say it a bunch of times. God, so. I can't stand that guy. I can't either. I hate him. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I definitely he's sharp. Like, <laughs> he's sharp though, but he just that voice. <laughs> I don't know what Ben is, honestly. He's my favorite. My favorite. Memes. If you do your Donald Trump voice, I'll do my Ben Sharpeo voice. I'll, 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 I'll try it. Try. It. I, I want you to try. It. Have you listened lately to this Ben Shapiro guy? He's the best. He loves he loves me. Oh wait, never mind. I just saw he tweeted at me, <laughs> and he was very disdainful. Well, well, you know, if if you don't have a job, it, it's your fault. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it has nothing to do with you know the economy because uh, it, it it shows that a, a free or market economy is. I don't know why people think they could dictate the economy. I don't. I just don't know. <laughs> That's, That's pretty, pretty good. good. That's pretty I'm like, good. It's pretty bro, good, dude. Like, calm yeah, down. Now. That's pretty calm good, man. Down. Anyway, local politics. Okay, local. Back up, local politics. So, uh, <laughs> what's what's the what's the plan? 
The plan. Okay. Oh uh, well, the plan is uh right now currently what I'm working with with some buds uh is basically not totally reforming the Democratic Party, but uh you know in Jefferson County, right? In, yeah, yeah, in Jefferson County, but uh basically you know showing them that we have a younger message, we have a fresh message. Um, uh, my dad used to always tell me when you go to a car lot and you have all these new cars, but none of them are selling. Do you change the car salesman or do you try to change the look of the car lot? Mm. You change the car salesman because the car salesman, for some reason, can't sell the cars anymore. And so even when we're talking about establishment, even in the Jefferson County uh, Democratic Party, you have a lot of establishment that's, you know, not really, I wouldn't say uh, apathetic to our issues, but they just don't understand them because they're nowhere near them. Mm. Like, you know. People like, you know, my my friends uh, and people who live in, uh, you know, Port Arthur, uh, we, you know, live in an area to where like, you know, we're, we're, our dad isn't a rich lawyer who owns like this law firm. And, yeah, and sits on a board somewhere. And, and sits on a board and makes, just sits down and makes money all day. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so like, I had, you know, people from the Democratic Party Jefferson County t- straight up tell me that we're not focused on put out there mm-hmm. when it comes to, you know, political elections. We're not focused on it because it's too hard. Mm-hmm. All right, we can't do it. It's like, it seems like there's a lot of apathy. It, it's a lot of yeah. apathy, but it's like when you talk to these people nationally, they 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 act like they have the formula. Like, mm-hmm. they'll be like, uh, say, for instance, you know, the establishment in the, I don't want to say any names, but <laughs> the establishment in the Jefferson County Democratic Party, you know, they'll say all the time, like, how we need to go, you know, into uh, into the impoverished parts of our community and, you know, start, you know, trying to actually get votes from there. But, you know, when it's you're time... Getting, you're trying to get votes for them, but you're not helping them. Exactly. So they'll only show up a week before the election. Yeah. But, like, when we lay down a, pro- a plan to have implement a 24-7 process to where, like, we could be in these people all, all their lives, they're like, no, we, we, we just don't want to focus on that. We don't, yeah. because, first of all, they they low propensity precincts. We, it's too hard for us. <laughs> we, we can't sell the cars. So we're just going to, like, just sit in, and, it's, and instead of passing the torch, we're just going to sit in here and die with it. Hmm. So what we've decided to do is say, okay, well, we're going to take things into our own hands. Um, I'm working on a campaign right now, so I have van access. So what I do is um, I, I block walk, I, I host town hall events. Right, even now? Yeah, now. Really? Uh, yeah, because, um, uh, quick plug, but um, I work for Adrian Bell uh, Congress uh, okay. campaign. Uh, she's running against uh, Randy Weber for District uh, 14. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, good luck, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, so what, what we're... What, what we try to do is um, host town hall events, you know, and, and just promote civic engagement, you know, door to door and and try to strip the social political narratives away from everything. Try to strip like all the terminology away from everything and just focus. Like we need to target these voters. No, you yeah. just need to target your constituents. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. And it's like what my our plan has been uh, is to basically say, hey, look. There's a lot of people who've been disfranchised by the political process. Let's make this umbrella term of all the people who've been disenfranchised for the pub, by by the pop, by politics. Mm. And we already had our first ones. We had okay, well, we have labor. Labor has been disenfranchised by politics. Um, so uh, we focus on working people, of course. Let's do that. But then we had to say, okay, it's more complicated than that. There's more intersections of people, and there's more reasons to why people are not voting. Mm. So we added uh, people in impoverished communities. Uh, let me just say it, the hood in it. We added the hood. Um, we, we started making GOTV programs, and that's basically get-out-the-vote programs for people you know, in impoverished ne- uh, neighborhoods you know, west side of Port Arthur. Mm. Um, we started focusing it on people who live right by the refinery plants and you know, have complaints about you know, that Hey, man, I feel like something's in my water because I've been getting hella sick lately. Mm-hmm. So we focus on environmental justice or what, you know, my mentor, John Beer, likes to say environmental racism. Mm. And so we're, we, 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 we do that by holding companies like the TCEQ accountable, um, working with people like Nick Lampson and people like uh, and, and even though Nick Lampson was a moderate Democrat, I really Really love how progressive he's become, definitely in the climate he's change. Still, fight. He's still speaking out and doing a lot. And yeah, yeah. And, and and so I really love him. And so uh, Nick Lamps and Joseph Trahan, John Beer, we've just all been trying to 
make this umbrella term of like what's an apathetic voter because we've seen that not only impoverished people are apathetic voters but the person the drug addict is a um also an apathetic voter the drug addict that goes to the Gulf, uh, the Gulf Coast Health Center mm. is an apathetic voter they feel like nobody focuses on us you know you know, one of my friends, I'm not going to say her name because I don't know how comfortable she she feels about this, but um, she's actually, um, she actually is now two years sober, you know, and she had a big opioid addiction. Mm. And so she goes to Gulf Coast and, you know, this is how it opened my eyes to where like there was a lot of people who just say, oh, no, I don't like politics because nobody cares about me. They don't care about me. Yeah. When. Uh, when you look at the statistics, over eighty that's um, mostly true. <laughs> over eighty heroin heroin users say that you know the first thing that they tried was opioids. Yeah. So when you see that, you like a lot. I, I would objectively say that that you know statistics don't all automatically correlate to a, a, a solution or an mm-hmm. answer. But I would say from that statistic, it seems like you know this opioid crisis, uh, pharmaceutical drugs has caused you know, a lot of people to become drug addicts. Mm -hmm. And so we have to focus on them too. So basically what we've been doing is making this huge umbrella term about what's an apathetic voter and targeting them and and and, and focusing on them more than focusing on the... Swaying the vote of somebody who's going to vote anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, and really not even swaying the vote or trying. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. exactly what you're saying. Like you know, the fix, 56 year old black woman named Shirley is going to vote Democrat all the time. Yeah. Uh, same thing for the 40 year old white man who's a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like I'm not going to focus on people who already vote. Yeah. I will, we need to focus solely and all the time on people who don't and and and, and ask them why they don't vote. And then if they don't vote. And e and if the party has a platform that they don't agree with, we just kind of like alter it and say, okay, man, maybe that is wrong. Yeah, maybe maybe you don't agree with the Democratic Party uh, thrusting us into endless wars. Let's do let's change that. Or, or maybe you 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 just don't agree with a lot of things that the Democrats have done in the past, like the 1994 crime bill. Let's change that. And like so, it's just like all about reforming the Democratic Party, but it starts on a local level, and it's just been so hard. Uh, seeing from establishment because they do not want to do anything. What the, to help the establishment here? Here, the establishment yeah. here. They don't. They just see put out there as uh, a wasted space. Bunch of seats, it's just yeah. seats to hold. Yeah, it, maybe some votes in the state state level. Maybe. Exactly. Like, it's pretty tragic too because really the only thing you can ever get done in your time is local stuff. I mean, realistically. Yeah. You know. When you're when you're in the politics, you've had a very lucky life, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if you're actually going to spend some time and energy in politics. You need to spend it locally. Like, locally. if you're going to try to get something done, you're not going to get anything done at the state level as an individual, really. You're not going to get anything not done, definitely not at the federal level. You know what I mean? But what you know what you might do? You might end up, you like... Might make, make, make the lives of the, your neighbors well, I mean, a little you bit might better. be able to, like, set aside a spot of land that's been annexed by the city and make it into a park. You know what I mean? You could do that. You can, you know, who knows? You might be able to reform this abandoned building down here into a community center. You know, you might get people to vote for that. I mean, if you're going to waste your, you know, not waste, if you're going to spend your time and your energy, got to do it local. Like, mm. there's, it's a, it's a waste to spend all this mental energy thinking about all this, all this federal stuff, stuff all, it, all day long. You know what we need it's to do? It's a waste here? of energy. We, we all, we need all, to, we need all need to get together and do a block party. Barbecue, city barbecues. Oh, city like barbecues. Like you've been talking about. Oh, yeah, I've been talking about that forever. Oh, that's dope. Maybe, maybe people will stop fucking shooting each other outside of the CCs. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Seriously. If they stop eating CCs and eat some good food, maybe they'll stop getting pissed off but, and shooting each other. But just going back to your point of focusing more on local yeah. uh, issues, and um, the thing about focusing more on local issues, you'll see that you actually have uh, factions in, yeah. in, in, in local yeah. time. And it's Dude, like a, working with T's in, in the recent election, yeah. like it was. The things that we we heard and he told us was like kind of crazy. Yeah, and so like when when you understand that, uh, you see that uh, that you have a lot of people that's working against you. Yes, but you also have a lot of people who want change too. Who who want to say, okay, well, I feel like we should change this. Well, you get together with them, and that's what we've been doing um, with p- people like Joseph Tran, uh, John Beard, Demarcus. Um, and Tristan, uh, Demarcus and Tristan of Shades of Blue, we've been getting together and making a progressive coalition mm-hmm. uh, to where now we had like 26, we had six people at our first meeting and 26 mm-hmm. people at our last meeting. Really? Yeah, and so what I want to do is have an open invitation for you guys to come. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because the thing about our progress, pre- progressive coalition, it's not party-based. Yeah. Meaning that it's not, you You don't have to be a Democrat to be 
come yeah. in our uh, progressive coalition because we focus strictly on community issues. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what we want to do. Uh, uh, that's, that's the way to do it too. Exactly. If, man, if you like, if you put up a sign. I don't care sign, about the politics. If, I just yeah, want to make things If you put up a sign better. on the door, yes. you put up a sign on the door where you're meeting and it's like, Democrats only. I mean, you're you're pushing out people that might want to do something. You know, what man, I mean? woman it's, haters it's club. Dumbest, yeah, <laughs> man, woman haters. You know, like, hey, man. Yeah, exactly. I I I, I hate parties. Yeah. I hate party politics. I hate well, it. I love parties, but not not it's, political. Not, party. <laughs> it's <laughs> exclusive. It like, doesn't have enough yeah. drugs for me. So <laughs> no. I, don't, I can't really do political parties. So 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 the main the main point of this coalition it, it is for the Democratic Party, but it's more so. Kind of like a fact finding mission in a way, you know, well, trying to figure out what's going on and, and talk to people. Well, uh, let, let, let me uh clarify one thing. Uh, what what I'm what weird what me and Demarcus, well, what, what me and my friends are doing, uh, when as far as reforming the Democratic Party, that's what we're doing. But the, progr- the progressive coalition has nothing to do with the Democratic Party, absolutely nothing. This was yeah. literally started by like five people <laughs> and of different spectrums and then like we've just continued to grow and 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 get, but just by focusing on community local issues like one of the things that we want to do is have a, a a test strip test uh that we're working on is like basically we're gonna uh set out a day to where like we're gonna give we we don't know the logistics of it yet but we're gonna give all these people test strip. sorry my dog was snoring really loud uh, <laughs> we're he gonna, hates politics uh, i feel that <laughs> But uh, we're gonna give all these people test strips that uh, is gonna test, you know, the the uh, how polluted your water is, mm, sure. uh-huh. and so they're gonna they're gonna test it and they're gonna put it in their tester and they we're gonna confiscate it and they're gonna give them give them all back to us and then we're gonna give all this stuff to the TCEQ and 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 that because that's the people who are supposed to hold this hold this shit accountable, yeah, and and they're not doing their job, so yes, it's hard to gaslight somebody whenever you have uh, whatever they're putting evidence in your face yeah exactly so it's like you know one of the things uh that's one of the things that we're really focusing on right now is environmental justice uh and environmental racism on how you know we ha- and in the term environmental racism just comes from the fact that most of these petrochemical plants are located right by impoverished minority neighborhoods yeah. well that's i mean that's 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 the the big problem in pa right yeah you know it's it's a lot of people that are in poverty and they're they're next door to a and then, a and chemical then plant. A chemical know? plant that's not even really putting money into our city. Like, you can say that Motive is buying, buying buildings yeah. and everything, but... See, that I did, I, and once that, that, that story got put in the newspaper, and I know you were talking about it a lot, yeah. but, like, that's the... It really kind of struck me, because, like, the way I kind of see it, like, if we have... If we keep building billion-dollar plants, like... Port Arthur should be like a bastion of like Dude. beautiful technology and, and no, streets. No, let me tell you something. And, hey, at least we're not at least we're not like Louisiana. I'll tell you that yeah, much right now. This could be a lot worse. No, I've I've I I watched a whole I watched a whole thirty minute like expose on the differences between the way that southwestern Louisiana deals with stuff and and like south in Texas in general deals with things, and uh, their local economies get like pennies pennies compared to ours panties so kind of you should be a little 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 thankful that that we're not like that Louisiana, at least doing. you know i mean they'd be doing more but yeah, you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. like shoot it's but, always always something worse somewhere else man dude yeah. oh yeah and but i feel Ooh. like that that can go for anything yeah. like any degree you know it can for sure and, and, and so like we can use that to hold on to optimism but we can't use that to like red hair from the issue right right that's uh-huh. true absolutely and so like you know because in port arthur we have a oil behemoth but we have an average of uh Eight percent unemployment. Yeah, which is you know more than what triple the national average, right? I mean, it's like three percent. Yeah, 4%, right? yeah, three percent. No way. Yeah, it's, it's yeah the low. national average is like three yeah, percent. No, but it's no a, way. It's a, it's a it's a flub number because they they basically anybody who stops Seeking looking for work, work, for work yeah. yeah, they they're uh, not they take them out because yeah. they yeah. just they're not looking for work. Yeah, and okay. then and then when when you really understand that uh, the un, unemployment rate is really not a good yeah, economic indicator anyway, but um just going back just seeing how. Port Arthur doesn't even have that. We don't even have a, a low unemployment rate. Uh, and then uh, we have, uh, uh, on top of a high un- unemployment rate, we have, you know, the median average of income is 18000 God. 18000 The median average of and income 19, is... 19000 is the poverty level, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you know that. Yeah. So Because <laughs> a lot of people don't. So, yeah. like, a lot of people don't know the 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 uh, how much how drastic that statement actually yeah. is. And then yeah, we most ha- of the people in Port Arthur are under are below the poverty poverty threshold. Absolutely. 
And so, you know, but we have this huge oil behemoth that that gets, you know, hella tax abatements and, and you know, and, and, and doesn't have to pay into our community at all. Destroys our streets. <laughs> and, then, and, and so then they want to turn around and say, hey, we're going to build... Um, uh, buildings. And we're we building fig- a bigger one. Yeah, yeah, we're building a bigger building and we're going to fix some of them. Not yeah. all of them, but we're going to fix some we of them. We want that one. And then in turn, so the property value for everybody over there that lives close to Proctor is going to go up for no fucking reason and they won't be able to, you know, actually yeah. be able to live there anymore. That's what a lot of people, a lot of the, the conspiracy theories about PA is that is that the refineries don't want people living there. You know, because a lot of people didn't come back after the hurricane, right? A lot after of Harvey. people. A lot of people. And um, we're not... That's why another thing we're doing uh, when, when when talking about community inclusiveness, we're trying to make sure that everybody stays on the census. Um, we've been doing a lot of hiring. I've been I don't work for the census, but I've been trying to get a lot of people to work for the census. Um, in Port Arthur, we even uh, had a library um, job uh, hiring call uh, for people to come to, and like that's the number one thing that. We really need to get like make sure that we stay on top of is making sure every vote is counted for the census. So thank you so much for bringing that up because that dictates how much money we'll get from the state. Yeah. Because since we're a rich land resource, a lot of people because a lot of people could be thinking, well, I mean, if put out this so poor, then why don't you just ask for more money? Well, the s- simple fact is we can't uh, since we have a rich land resource on paper. Virtually, we're rich as hell. We're like a deer park. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really bigger than a deer park. Right. I'm really supposed to be richer than a deer park. Yeah, because there's less people. It's a cap per capita thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when when you understand that, uh, when you when you understand where where we're supposed to be, uh, like on paper, mm. we won't qualify for that Robin Hood money, as uh, as as people like to say. Is we won't Robin Hood. Money? Yeah, yeah. We won't <laughs> qualify. Like you know, steal from the rich. Like you yeah. can't steal from the rich when technically you're you're, you're still rich. Yeah. You know, as far as land resources. Yeah. So when when we understand the problem, the problem is the refinery. So yeah. that like when when people try to say like, oh no, it's not the refinery. It's just and it, it, like if you can't get a job at the refinery, it's because you know you're you're not passing the drug test. You'll hear that a lot. Mm. And 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 actually, a study was actually done by Lamar put out their college that showed that that wasn't the case at all. <laughs> mm. That people would just be getting denied of programs because of strict nepotism mm. and nepotism oh, yeah, yeah. solely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and oh, it, with the plants. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, don't know somebody in the plants. It's yeah. almost impossible to get a yeah. Nepotism, well, yeah. And so like, but it was this thing saying like. Like saying, and, and the study was d- done in like uh, I think 2010. Uh, but like, yeah, there was this, this big thing saying that, oh well, you know, people not getting jobs because they can't pass. Well, black people not getting jobs because they can't pass the drug test because they got weed in their systems. Mm. False. <laughs> <laughs> black people can't get jobs because of nepotism. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, um, and then even when you have uh, when you even when you look at the stewardships that come directly from the more put author, even if you get a, a degree, let's say in like. Uh, instrumentation. You get like a like a trade degree. Or yeah, something. a trade yeah. degree. You'll still have to. That's still just a foot in the door. That I, like I have a lot of friends who say that. Hey, man, I got my instru- instrumentation and I still haven't moved up in the plants. You know, so it's like when you think about things like that, we really have to start cracking down more on the refinery, and that and that's only going to come from a, a community revolution, right? Yeah, that's only going to come from the whole community becoming active and excited about well, the process. Because I mean, it, it, regardless, like even if you know, I might the ideas I've said about they, it, like it should be, they should take care of everything, and give us more. But, but you can, you can, you can logically say that that they're taking advantage. Yeah. No. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, and and there's a reasonable amount of that. Yes, capitalism, businesses, and it, it has brought a lot of income to this area, given a lot of people jobs. Mm-hmm. But they're still taking advantage. Yeah, most definitely. Built, that built a big ass school on P and G. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, they built a school. Built a big ass school in P and G. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have done things, but they they probably could do a lot more. I'd say. And then and it's like great. Thanks for p- building a big school in P and G. They didn't. They didn't. But where's your land resource? <laughs> they didn't build. They're they a very didn't build problematic more, mascot yeah. for that school too. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the Indian. That's a whole other yeah, let's thing. Not get it. Whole yeah. other let's thing. not get it. I mean, that. we're talking about community yeah. about community politics, aren't we? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, that's, that's like yeah. we'll, we'll start getting hate mail from that. Oh yeah, people that, are passionate <laughs> about protecting that stupid I mascot. Don't, I don't understand it. I've been telling you know, been telling everybody all the time. I don't understand, but I don't, I don't want to get into it. I think it's stupid. But honestly, though, I. I think my time is pretty much done. I got, I got, I got to oh, run. Gotta, we got to yeah. check out. Yeah, I got to check out. I got to go. All right. Well, 
Yeah, hey. we're gonna have you back, man. Oh, we, got, we, we sure. obviously have a lot of things to talk about. Oh, most so. definitely, yeah, yeah, most for sure. Definitely. And um, um, you got anything coming up, or you want to, you know, plug podcasts, anything like that? You know, let let the people know what you're doing. Oh well, I, I got a couple things to plug. Okay, actually, go uh, for it, dog. One first thing to plug: uh, be on the watch out for Adrian Bell for Congress. Okay. She's running for Congress again. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people know about her in again? this area. Yeah, she so, ran uh, last time. Okay, and um, so uh, what we're gonna do is just keep going until we move the needle. And so uh. Yes, yeah, she's running again. A lot of people are excited about her going. So please watch out for Adrian Bell. Um, another plug, I, I want to plug uh, Tristan and Demarcus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have a podcast called Shades of Blue. And if you're really into like just different theories, they touch uh, on some really cool stuff. Really yeah. cool like, stuff. Deep stuff. And, and, and like, matter of fact, they had a. a Is debate. it like broad political philosophy type stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, full, yeah, yeah. Philosophical for sure. Okay. Yeah, like uh, they had a, a conversation over the death penalty. And, it's like they, they put a poll uh, either death penalty or reparations. Yeah. Yeah, which so which like, are both controversial, deep, yeah. And so like, ugh, right? So it's just um, shout out to them, Shades of Blue, amazing podcast. And then of course, plug me, uh, E to the podcast. <laughs> uh, check me out, E to the podcast. Um, I'm more of my podcast centers more around like uh, s- uh, society and cultural issues. Um, but of course, we throw some politics in there every uh, once in a while. So if you like that, just uh, check me out. And um, that's really it. Yeah. Well, cool, dude, man. thanks for coming, man. It's oh, fun. yeah, it's, it's great. To finally get to hang appreciate out with you. Yeah, hey, nah, sure, thank you guys for having sure. me so much. So uh, we'll see if we can work together on something. In the future. Oh, oh, yeah, most definitely. And um, actually, I'm gonna be working in the studio tomorrow. Actually, okay, oh, cool. yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm gonna be working. Here. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, I got you with Julius. Julius. Yeah. All right, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. You're gonna be on Wake Up Beaumont. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's gonna be real. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on, dude. Oh uh, no, thank you so much, man. All right, awesome. <laughs> All right, big thanks to Jalen, man. Thanks for coming on and doing this thing. Uh, like we said earlier, check out his podcast, the E2 Podcast, uh, if you like what you heard. And a special shout out to our patrons, Jordan Stringer, Lance Killian, Brian Castino, Doug Waldrop, Michael Saar, Ben McClellan, Randy Edwards, Ali Gillette, and our newest patron, Allison Pierce. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you, you pay our bills. You help pay our bills. And we couldn't do it without y'all. We couldn't do all these crazy things. MVPs. And y'all really kind of keep us. Y'all keep keep us going. Like, like somebody really is listening out there. That's right. And speaking of patrons, you know, we don't have him on here just because of that. We have him on here because he's an interesting dude with lots to talk about. But that's on our next episode, Randy Edwards. So come back, check it out. Yep. And if you have a guest that you think would be a good fit, as we always say at the end of this episode, send them our way. Talk to us. You know, we want to talk to you. We like talking to people. You yeah, know? we kind of do it every week. We kind of yeah, every week we're talking to somebody. And we need know? people. Gosh we need darn some it. more people. I want more people to talk to. You. Yeah, I want different people. More people. Not I want similar people, but we're different. not slowing down. We got we got plenty just coming, but more would be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're coming up on hundred. You know, I want someone who's like a professional clown. That would be Ooh, what's what's kind of call? Gonna, Yeah, like, that's why I'm here to say yeah. that I that's, believe. That's, uh, I believe. We're gonna make it one day Brothers, I believe I believe I believe